should have came August 1st. So we're gonna take this and run it to the tree that we put up last year, or last year, two months ago. <laughs> we usually only come once a year, so I'm used to saying last year. Anyway, but this is old, this is not an old, this is brand new boat crank for, you know, pulling your boat up on your trailer. But we're gonna put the cable around here, put this on the tree, and then we're gonna run it up, attach it to the barrel, crank the barrel up, and we got a bolt right here right there that bolt right there will make it so that if a bear steps on it or anything like that maybe not yeah that's what i, I we got to mount it like this we got to mount it upside down so that way if a bear comes in here and hits this it won't loosen this up still not good though we'll cross that bridge we got so much stuff to figure out Thanks to our sponsors. Yeah. Truly Lemonades. On the chains, do you have something to connect to it and we just make the loop? Or do we need to connect around the loop? No. The chain. No, so I got that's kinda I got the these D rings. So you have that. So I can just make a so yeah. I just make a loop. And really, this one's I mean this thing's rated for eight hundred eighty pounds. I just didn't know what the connection how we we're gonna get it so I can take the finger on it. I'm not worried about the way of barrel, it's more of a barrel plus a finger. Ish, man. Well, this is where we can shorten up the chains. Yeah, because you got a good eight inches right there that you right. can. Right, and that's why. So it'll it'll bind over the top of the lid, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be up there. Does it look like it's bending? It's definitely bending. Is it? I don't know why my flash is on, but... So, we put a cable here, ran it through the pulley, and ran it through this side. I'm pretty sure that should be enough. So I need to pull this down to here. So hold on to that cable. I'm just pulling the cable through it, but I don't see it being an issue. That's probably why it's so hard to crank. Right there you go. I was literally staring at it. You didn't see anything? Look at the winch. Look at the winch. That's what that was. I can never fucking stop cussing. <laughs> I don't even know I'm doing it. Um, Alright, so what we're doing right now is Ryan just did a test. 
he knew they worked, but I don't think he ever did it with corn, right? No. Nope. Yeah. So first run with corn. But what's happened is we did the test, make sure it works, everything's set up. And then in two weeks, the second camp is going to come in here and do some work. Or the first camp, I guess. The guys that come in before us, they're going to come in and do some work. And they're going to turn this on. Because uh, right now, it's not legal to have a feeder out yet. But we did run a test just for test purposes. And we got all the corn in there. And all they got to do is just come out, lower it down, turn it on, lower it, raise it back up. So we're all set. So we made this platform for a HME solar panel. Brother said I wouldn't be able to hook up to his Spy Point Micro, but come to find out, he doesn't know anything about his own camera. And then I think I'll probably strap it to the tree. ROH. Yeah, that's that's a losing battle. Oh yeah, especially this far out in the middle of nowhere. We got, that tree, we got those two right there. It's still close, but it's, you'd see them coming in. So if we have that tree, that tree, stands right there. I mean, it's still a 50 yard, 40 yard. We cut out that tree and this tree and we're good. I mean, I'm not trying to shoot it down here. Just think, when we kind of did a lot of the brushing, we were thinking, you know, I mean, here, if I, I'd, I'd my thing is my thing about that spot is if it's coming in you're shooting through it <laughs> like if the deer's right there well who knows where they're coming from i don't i know i don't have that information we really don't need that big of a tree i mean we could i need a bigger tree for a climber i mean that's the size i need right there for a climber these, those. Spacing's good. They ain't gonna reach out and touch it with that. Just gotta cut that one tree and it's good to go, right? Yeah. Put on the cable. Yeah. When he ran it up this side of the tree after he had it attached. He had to bring it down once or twice because he had to get those clamps centered right. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. The end. <laughs> All right, so we're going up this tree and this tree. Mm -hmm. Where do we go up this tree and this tree? Why? I'm just worried I'm not going to get up very far at the um, climber on this tree. Why? Too big? Knots. Yeah. You're only going past that first little bowl. Okay. You ain't going past that one. All right. Yeah, I'd say once you'll be, if you can get up to that bigger bulb. Okay. Just below that. All right. So I grabbed the climber instead of bringing the ladder because it would have been a pain in the ass. And there's plenty of trees in here I can just put my climber on. So that's how we're getting the cable up the, up the tree, folks.
First place I ever used a climber was here. I used that one, that old one in the barn. Or the uh, old cabin. There's one in there. And uh, as soon as I used it, I went and bought one the next week. Who, who brought that up here? Darren's, I think. Or Brian's. One of the two. If you can get just below that that bulb, right. if you can, that's where you can hang the cable. Which, if you go up, probably one more one more step, you'll have it. Yeah. Teamwork thing. makes the dream work, man. It's the little things that count, Josh. Like giving your wife the window seat on the airplane. Never do that. <laughs> <laughs> no way I'm doing that. Not a chance. My favorite. <laughs> that's it, right? Uh, time to come down. Yeah. Oh, that'll hold. Coming down is the worst. Always is. What I hate the worst. This is a super easy special. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I always do an intro and saying that if you really want to know how to do this, go to this guy. <laughs> you did? I mean, I guess it's good to give him credit because that's where we got yeah, I mean, the whole idea from. I got everything, right? Well, I'll throw that hatch up to you. Oh, Lord have, Lord have, Lord mercy. You're going to be able to raise it up? Tall enough? Well, hold it back up again. How far do you think I got to go? Two feet. Foot and a half. Looks way better. Looks okay. Yeah. Looks pretty yeah. good. I'd say, I mean, it's probably still a little bit that way, but I can't go any higher. Yeah. Unless I stood on that and I could go up another 10 inches. But I got zero concerns about this one. I think we got enough cable. Definitely got enough cable. That'll work just right here. shorter. Yeah, it's just, it's just pulling the trees together. We're going to have to get it all the way up there. Because it just lowered a foot and a half. Right, so I'm thinking maybe now we got to do the chain thing again. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, because it's going to go up probably only, what, six and a half feet from there, isn't it? Yeah. That's not going to be far enough off the ground. I don't know. You get it seven feet off the ground. It's true. I mean... I would stand on the other side of the tree. <laughs> Good idea. Too low, raise it. It's too low, right? Way too low. I mean, it's a foot too low. So this is the stand we call the wolf. We call it that because me and my brother were hunting here probably been like six years ago. Six years ago now. But we were hunting pretty close to here. We were both in climbers and a wolf. It came out about 8 o'clock in the morning, 
and we'd never seen a wolf up here before so we just we've always called this area the wolf because we saw a wolf here we've been wanting to put a stand over here for a while or i have yeah then ryan wanted to put a stand over here too eric and i both wanted I've came over here and hunted with climbers a couple times and I never saw anything but we never really had anything to draw the deer to the area so now we got we're gonna have this here but there's a natural funnel over here there's a big creek bottom that runs through and then this leads to the cedar swamp and it's really thick in here so it's a safer area there's probably a lot of bedding in here there's definitely bedding in the area and this is where when Adam shot his deer two years ago it ran through this area and then died probably about 150 yards from here, even though we tracked it like a mile. Yeah, it was seven seconds. That was. Yeah, I was watching my camera. So that's, so, that's good. I think that's a good time. Yeah, I think seven's good. I like seven. Lucky number Just seven, thinking, man. So what do we got? So we got 240 pounds of corn in here. I'm curious, like I, I guess obviously we can't calculate, but how many, how much weight and corn do you think just came out? Half a pound? Yeah, I don't know. Having it that wide too, it doesn't even, it doesn't even touch. It's not even close to touching. This cable right here, the up cable. Yeah, it's because it's the, span, it's the span, that's why. That's what I'm saying, having it this wide. No, this is right. Both those hand cranks. What was that? Both those hand cranks. Yeah. I guess we need to bring it down. I got your shirt in this. Flip it upside down. So this lady. coming through there and definitely I could even see the trees are open yeah there's a run that goes right back through there isn't it? that's like an old skid trail or something isn't it? yeah see I think right so. along right along the edge of the lawn right back to the tin can isn't it yep so I didn't get to do a lot of talking when I was here I didn't have my camera my battery died and this battery is about to die but I'm gonna make the best of it so we had this camera set up. We're really excited about it and it had five pictures. So in two months, five pictures. And it just didn't work. It didn't take pictures for some reason. So it didn't take pictures of us when we came to get it. And if it died because of taking five pictures, then it's not the right camera. So we're gonna put up another one here. We got a wild game he's gonna put up. Hopefully we get some pictures when we come back this season. And this is the shooting lane that we cleared out. We really didn't have to do too much clearing because this was already a road when they came and logged it. So uh, I don't know why they put this little road here. I guess they do their own thing. So this is probably a good 65 yards from the stand. And then once you get up to the stand, you can see, you can see to the left, maybe 30, 40 yards. And then to the right, you can see probably another 80 yards. So you have three lanes to shoot in. And this is a very active area because you have the cedar swamp here in the background. And this actually comes out at the tin can. It actually goes way around the property, but the next stand closest to the cedar swamp is the tin can. And they travel through here. Me and Ryan walked it last year and there were some mega trails coming through it. We're gonna go to the tin can next. I will see you there. No more. No more. Unless I had a really stressful day. <laughs> Still way better than it was. Get this is where that'll work for now. Yeah, Tin can, three stairs ish. So, right here is the cedar swamp. This is, goes to the last place I was just at. And then it goes around here. This is the old logging road right here. And it goes all the way around the end. So but now that we got this all cleared up. Thanks for our sponsors. <laughs>
We haven't seen any bucks on this camera, but there's a lot of doe activity and come hunting season, they just want to go where the does are. So having does around in this area is a good thing. I mean, we'd like to see more bucks, but at the same time, we don't hunt here for two and a half more months. The deer here aren't like the deer in southern Michigan where you can pattern them and stuff like that. You're gonna, you might see one deer at a time. Uh, one deer, one day for the whole time you're here. You're looking at it. Yep, that's good. Not too high? Nope. Well, let's wait, let's turn it on, let's get a transmission. Again, Josh, this is what we call the original power tool. That's right. Look at all that power. Actually, that one looks okay. This yeah. one, though, yeah, that's, that one's fine. But we gotta get rid of this one. See, that's what it looks like now. I'm gonna get rid of that tree. I don't know if it opened up. It just opened up 10 yards. coming through there anyway. Is that a birch? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you can just probably cut that limb off, dude. No. No. Okay. We're too late. This? Yeah, the one beside it, the little one right there. Carrie? Yeah. All right, so we got that open now, there. So we don't have really long shots other than behind us here. Like that shot's probably 75 yards. And then to the feeder is not too, not too far. So this is it, we're out of here. We're gonna go for a quick walk across the road, but we are leaving camp. We're gonna go park uh, on the trail and then walk for a little bit and then come back, hit the trail, get in a truck and drive for 10, 11 hours, however long it takes. We're gonna have to cross the bridge today, so traffic's gonna be bad at the Mackinac Bridge, but other than that, hopefully it'll run pretty smoothly. So. There was a lot of traffic coming in. We've never seen that much traffic up here before. So I guess since summer's running down, people are trying to get out and be active before it starts getting cold up here. They're they're rushing to the campgrounds and properties and etc. So we're gonna go for a walk for a minute and if we see anything I'll definitely show you. So that's it. That's our trip. We didn't do a whole lot of scouting. It was really overgrown compared to the last time I was there and compared to what it looks like on Google Maps. But thanks for watching. Comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. I gotta go.